John Church, the author of Newport, The Artful City. And in this book, I treat Newport according to its districts. In the north end of Newport, an area I call Broadway and Points North, has a long story to tell from the founding of Newport in 1639 uh, through its evolution in the 18th century, in the Victorian age, and into certain battles fought during the urban renewal of the 1960s and to the present day. If we look at the earliest map uh, known of Newport uh, in, in great detail, I should say, of 1777 by Charles Blaskowitz, this detail shows the original street called Broad Street, which began at present day Washington Square and went between two hillsides. It was the natural entry point to the countryside adjacent to the, the town itself. So Broadway in the area to the north was largely rural right up until the mid 19th century. And also just off of uh, Broad Street was a street called Tanner Street, which is now present day uh, Dr. Marcus Wheatland Boulevard. It went through several naming processes. First it was Tanner Street with a small stream running along it. And that's where tanneries were located. It was later in the 19th century renamed West Broadway. And then after that, in the, in the 20th century, Dr. Marcus Wheatland Boulevard, after a prominent African-American surgeon who had made his home in Newport. So history embedded in that street. Let's move ahead several centuries to 1907 with this Atlas map. It shows the evolution of the Victorian city that was Newport. In the lower part of the map, note the relatively standardized house lots. That's an absolute reflection of the Industrial Revolution, the standardization of real estate, the standardization of machine-made building parts, and you see that kind of standardization. Also along the street is a black dotted line all along uh, Broadway. That is the, the electric streetcar company which came into Newport in 1899. And as you visually move up the map on the upper right, you'll see the train shed, the car shed for the old colony railroad. So this is the industrial moment in the city. Uh, George Norman, who was a Newporter, was critical in the evolution of this modern city for its time by starting the Newport Waterworks. And other developers, such as Alfred Smith, were opening up this land in the North End you know, to real estate speculation. In the upper part of the map is one element from the past. It's called Elmhurst on the right-hand side. It's at present day One Mile Corner. That was a grand country estate when this was still a rural area. The house is by Russell Warren. It still stands today. But by 1907, you can see even this grand estate was beginning to be subdivided. There's a small street called Hoppin Street with very uh, 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 small scale house lots. Those were for industrial workers. Now Newport was not a major industrial center, but still the newspapers in the 19th century reported there were over 2000 mechanics living off of Broadway. These means people in all of the various skilled, tr skilled trades that uh, occurred during the industrial revolution. And, and lastly, this photograph of Broadway from the uh, late 1880s. Here you see it, tree-lined with elms, the electric streetcars running, and a mix of earlier colonial buildings and later Victorian architecture. And of course, that is Newport, the layered city, the city with colonial foundations, with Victorian overlay. and West Broadway, though, were threatened in the mid 20th century during the era of urban renewal, uh, when the city began to consider areas that needed revitalization, they looked at Broadway. The old Victorian commercial business district was slowly decaying. Something did need to be done, but there was a debate in Newport about which way to go. Should they go the route of historic preservation? Should they go the route of urban renewal, which involved demolition and rebuilding? Part of West Broadway was demolished, but then there was a resident outcry 
the neighborhood itself rose up and the rest was preserved. And now that preserved area is going through a great deal of revitalization in historic buildings themselves. Also, the creation of Newport Bridge, the construction of it and the completion of it in the late 1960s opened up the entire rural area of northern Newport to development. And it's something the city still struggles with today. What will the identity of the North End be? I think what marks the North End, besides this rich colonial and Victorian history, it did not have as many artists and writers celebrating its various sites as Washington Square, Ocean Drive, Bellevue Avenue, and the Point did. Those authors in the 19th century, what they romanticized did affect reality. Because in the 20th century, those areas of Newport that were celebrated in literature, painting, photography, in writings, tended to be preserved. Broadway, as, an, as a rural area and as an early uh, Victorian commercial zone, did not have as much of that. So it was the residents themselves who saw the value. And that is where the lesson lies with the North End in this story of Newport.